This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. This group is purely a defensive and protective group, purely. It has nothing to do with attacking people, and the only time they actually show up is when people are being attacked. Advocating violence or acting in self-defense, the group Proud Boys says it's defending Western male culture in an age of globalism and multi multiculturalism. The alt-right group is growing around the country and making a name for itself right here on the Sun Coast tonight. We'll take a closer look at the group some describe as white supremacist. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the Proud Boys coming up. But first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with a yet another bombshell out of Washington. 118 days into the Trump administration, the Justice Department is appointing former FBI Director Robert Mueller as a special counsel to oversee the investigation into possible collusion between members of the Trump campaign and the Russian government during the 2016 election. Mueller oversaw the FBI from 2001 to 2013. The appointment comes amid growing Democratic outcry for someone outside the Justice Department to handle the politically charged investigation. It follows the revelation just yesterday that fired FBI Director James Comey wrote in a memo that Trump had asked him to end an investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. We'll have the latest developments on this developing situation coming up tonight at 11. Here in Sarasota, the school board is joining education groups from across the, the, the Florida, calling on Governor Rick Scott to veto a sweeping education bill passed in the final hours of this year's legislative session. The $419 million bill covers a wide array of issues, from making recess mandatory for elementary school students to increasing the amount of funding to private charter schools. The bill was a top priority of House Speaker Richard Corcoran and school choice groups, but opponents say it undermines the public schools and shifts local control to the state. They're not giving us enough money for us to be able to keep up with the uh, rising costs. They're not, and they're just not thinking about it. And also, they're taking away local control. We know what's needed in this community better than Tallahassee does. The bill does include popular measures like pay raises for teachers. New developments in the Andre Avalos murder trial in Manatee County. The only eyewitness to the triple murder is taking the stand. The window, widow of Pastor James Tripp Battle recounted the last day Avalos shot and killed her husband in December 2014. Joy Battle testified Avalos showed up at the church looking for her husband. When he arrived, Joy says Avalos met him on the sidewalk where he shot him four times. I assured him that I had been around Tripp and Amber quite a bit, working with them at the church. I was there more than either one of them. And so anytime they were there, I was also there. And, you know, living with Tripp and being his wife, I was not picking up on the same, the same, I didn't have that same feeling. Avalos' father took the stand for the defense today, testifying his son was so paranoid he wouldn't allow his dad to visit his home without calling first. Two Sarasota men are in custody tonight after allegedly stealing a half million dollars worth of equipment and trying to sell it on Craigslist. Detectives at the sheriff's office were alerted when a victim reported a flatbed trailer and two stump grinders stolen from a lot on Fruitville Road. The victim then saw an ad for the equipment online. Deputies say Andrean Martiz and Alfred Everett Jr. contacted the victim and agreed to sell back the items at a gas station along Alligator Alley. The victim notified law enforcement and the two suspects were taken into custody. They each were charged with grand theft. Now to Venice, where Sarasota County Commissioner Nancy Dietert and State Representative Alex Miller are helping the Loveland Center celebrate its first year of operations. The residential community for adults with devel developmental disabilities houses 64 people. While residents pay some rent, usually what they could afford, the center depends on state funding. This year's budget allocated nearly a half million dollars for Loveland. Dietert says Governor Scott isn't likely to veto funding for the center, and Representative Miller vowed to support it in Tallahassee. Venice's planning department is giving the okay to an affordable housing project on Knight's Trail Road near Laurel Road. The developer wants to build 500 affordable housing units. It will be located to, uh, close to some big employers, including PGT Industries and Turvis Tumbler. 
affordable housing has been a topic that uh, city council has been uh, exploring for a long time. Uh, this is the closest we've come to uh, having a new uh, development uh, that, uh, show, that could be uh, affordable workforce housing. The City Council still needs to approve the project. A public hearing will be held before a vote. Boaters in Sarasota may need to find a new place to launch. The 10th Street boat ramp will close temporarily next week from Tuesday night until Thursday afternoon. The city is closing it so it can, so crews can resurface nearby a parking lot. It's only part of, of the repairs at Centennial Park. In the past three months, all boat docks were replaced. Crews were also dredging the nearby basin, removing built-up silt, to improve the health of Sarasota Bay. So, Bob, there was some rain last night. Is there still more to come? Well, we have some right now, Alan. Showers will show you those right now. It's along the sea breeze front, which is not all that active, but could get a little bit more active as we push in toward the eight and nine o'clock hour tonight. Look at this high temperature today, 97 degrees. That was a record high set at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. 97 uh, beat the old mark of 95 set back in 1943. So yes, it has been warm today, and it's got uh, a possibility of some record highs again tomorrow. Bentley's a webcam showing a nice day out over Sarasota Bay. Calm conditions out there, a few clouds every once in a while, but all in all, a fairly nice sunset ahead with some cloudiness in the offing so that always adds to the colors and we'll look at, get a look at that as far as the rainfall goes you can see those showers breaking out especially over south sarasota county not a lot but there are a few uh, down to our south and now near port charlotte uh, spreading off toward inglewood a few brief showers have been prevalent there and another one now developing right there near inglewood and along i-75 in northport so a little slick driving conditions there in between river road and uh, again uh, down near Northport. Obviously another shower breaking out near Lakewood Ranch too. Here you can see that sea breeze has moved inland, but that's what's kicking off the showers. This is the actual sea breeze right here. And then the showers developing well to the west of that as they move off in that general direction. Now this activity will move off toward the west at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Then we can expect other storms to be breaking out this evening. A better chance of rain comes Friday, though. We'll and the Sarasota that. Sailors baseball team had their, uh, their semi uh, regional semifinal game uh, rained out last night. We wish them the best of luck tonight. Absolutely. All right. And still to come, a pro Western fraternal organization. That's how Proud Boys describes itself. The alt right group has had violent clashes with progressive and left wing protesters, including here on the Sun Coast. We'll show you what happened when we return. At four on Suncoast View. This Throwback Thursday, we are heading to the disco. I'm Joey Panic on Suncoast View. It's the 70s, and we are celebrating everything from fashion to disco dancing. The Rosemary Indie Market will show us all the trendiest 70s clothes and products that will still stun today. Classic Broadway and television actor Ben Vereen is in the studio to talk about roots and how the show changed television forever, plus Louis Modern in the kitchen. Tomorrow at four on Suncoast View. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything, or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here. At the Wanna Be Inn, on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida, to plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Today, the air is perfect.
inside. Expect more from your cooling and heating. Daikin. You might remember a few weeks ago the protests and counter protest over whether Sarasota should be a sanctuary city. It got heated. And it turns out members of a fairly new alt right group named the Proud Boys were right in the middle of it. Kate Flexter joins us with more on Proud Boys and what they are all about. Kate. Thanks, Alan. Some say the group is a platform for hate speech, while others say the focus is solely on Western pride. We had a chance to speak with the group to find out. No hate! It was a protest over whether or not Sarasota should be a sanctuary city. And like many recent protests, things got heated. So much so that Juliana Musheyev of a progressive group called Answer Suncoast felt threatened by a counter protester that she said invaded her personal space. And of course, you know, my heart sped up. I'm like, you know, this man is next to me. He seems kind of provocative. Or provoking, and I walk away. You know, I don't react, I just walk away, and he follows right after me. It was getting to the point where it could have become like an, a physical altercation. Before it could, though, friends of Musheyev stepped in. It could have gone badly, but it didn't. I'm glad. Musheyev says the man was a member of an alt-right group called Proud Boys, formed just one year ago by co-founder of Vice magazine, turned Fox News contributor Gavin McGinnis. The Proud Boys Facebook page describes the group as a pro-Western fraternal organization in favor of minimal government, maximum freedom, anti-political correctness, anti-racial guilt, venerating housewives and reinstating a spirit of Western chauvinism during an age of globalism and multiculturalism. It's about uh, reclaiming and understanding that American culture and Western culture in particular is something unique. But some say it's a front for a white supremacist agenda, something production director of Proud Boy magazine Paul Bazile refutes. We have no interest in hate groups. We have no interest in fascism. We have no interest in Nazism or racism. The group made national headlines in a clash with far-left protesters known as Antifa in Berkeley, California, after reports of rock-throwing protesters who interfered with a scheduled appearance by former senior editor of Breitbart News, Milo Yiannopoulos. The protest quickly escalated, turning violent. By day's end, multiple arrests, nearly a dozen injured, and seven hospitalized, according to police. Since then, the Proud Boys has formed a tactical branch of the group called the Fraternity Eternal order of alt knights, calling for those that quote possess the warrior spirit. Although Bazile insists it's solely for protection. This group is purely a defensive and protective group. Purely, it has nothing to do with attacking people. And the only time they actually show up is when people are being attacked. Investigative journalist for the Southern Poverty Law Center Ryan Lenz says determining who is behind the violence in those situations is hard to say. This is a complicated question because the violence that those groups are associated with generally has been in moments of Antifa, you know, counter protests that turn violent. The center has seen a resurgence in alt-right groups like the Proud Boys since President Trump was elected, particularly among young people. While the ideas uh, have, have a long history, there is certainly a new energy among the youth in this country, among the college educated, among the college students. Old ideas with new energy. We do believe in free speech except for hate speech. Whether somebody agrees or disagrees with me, that's the exact reason we ought to be talking. One thing both groups do agree on is the importance of free speech. Kate, okay, thank you. And coming up, someone who was at the protest and the response from the American Civil Liberties Union next on The Trapezoid. Why settle for less? Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Nobody beats Subaru in service, quality, vehicle quality, and overall quality. And ALG named Subaru the 2017 top brand for residual value. Now lease the most fuel-efficient vehicle in its class, a new Subaru Outback for just $2.29 a month, or get 0% financing with complimentary maintenance included. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. But is it? 
It's really just the beginning, right? Have you written a book and want it published but don't know where to start? You're not alone. Page publishing cuts through the confusion that most new authors face, like copyright protection, barcodes, printing, and digital uploading. We will get your book into bookstores now. We guide you through the publishing maze and help you distribute and sell your work in hard copy and ebook formats. That's right, we will digitize and place your book for sale on Amazon, Apple iBooks, and Google, offering it to millions. Don't waste another minute. Most publishers won't even look at new author submissions but we're different. We review your book and provide you feedback in about a week. If we decide to publish your book, your work ends and ours begins. From copy editing and proofing to typesetting and book cover art, our team gets you into bookstores fast. Call for your free author submission kit at 800-425-5308. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope. And some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708. Welcome back. What could be wrong with a group which calls itself the Proud Boys? Well, maybe you can start with the founder's description as a pro-West fraternal organization. Our emphasis, he says, will be on street activism, preparation, and confrontation. We will protect and defend our right-wing brethren when police and government fail to do so. The Proud Boys have shown up here on the Sun Coast, infiltrating peaceful protesters who were demonstrating in opposition to suggestions Sarasota should become a sanctuary city, which means a community that doesn't cooperate with federal authorities enforcing immigration laws. Joining us for more is Michael Barfield, the vice president President of the Florida chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union, and Roger Davis a, with the Progressive Sarasota. He was at the recent Sarasota protest and witnessed the clashes between the Proud Boys and those supporting sanctuary cities. And Roger, let me start with you. You were there. Um, in your opinion, did the Proud Boys cross the line between protesting their point of view and interfering with others' uh, ability to make their points? Um. Well, my impression, I, I was about 10 feet from where um, the Proud Boys entered the anti-protest uh, group that was protesting against um, the Republican sanctuary, anti-sanctuary movement. There's many antis here. Um, but um, basically, they moved into a very crowded corner where um, the answer uh, Sarasota protesters were uh, and shoved their way in. Uh, and and really were quite intimidating and and physically you know just shoved their way in and, and stood there and and we're making physical contact with other people Michael where's the line because the American Civil Liberties Union and the the, the, the Constitution the First Amendment protects the, the right to free speech but when if this is true those people shove their way uh, into people into the group protesting uh, in the other direction where does, does that cross a line? Well, first, let me say we don't endorse their message or their tactics. Uh, but we've never taken the position that free speech belongs only to those that agree with us. That being said, the line for us is physical contact, uh, violence, any kind of physical contact that's unwanted, undesired, uh, is to us inappropriate. That violates uh, uh, what we would considered to be the, the first, your First Amendment rights because it is intimidating. But speech itself that's uh, offensive, that uh, we don't like the message, that is purely protected by the, uh, pure speech is protected by the First Amendment. But when they say that their emphasis is on street activism, preparation, defense, and confrontation, 
and that they will protect and defend the right of the right-wing brethren when the police and government fail to do so. You could read that as a uh, pledge to actually get physical if need be. Well, I think that words like you just read, we've all learned that words don't hurt us, and that's our approach to it. It's actions, actions that are physical in contact that where, is where the ACLU draws a line. We do not take the position that because we don't believe in their message or we disagree with it, that they're not entitled to First Amendment protection to spew their, their message out there into the marketplace of ideas. In fact, the marketplace of ideas is built on the concept that unpopular speech needs protection of the First Amendment, not popular speech. R Roger, when you were at that protest, how did it end? How, uh, you know, w w were the police active in trying to separate uh, both sides? Did uh, members of the Proud Boys uh, basically go away on their own? Uh, no, the police were standing behind me um, and, and witnessed this, the same thing that I saw. They, and, and several members of the um, Answer Sarasota group also came up and asked the policemen to please, you know, talk to the Proud Boys and, you know, to do something about, about the, the situation that was developing because they were being quite aggressive. Uh, it was the uh, two gentlemen you saw in the news clip that, um, um, that stood behind Julianne, I believe is her name, that kind of buffered them from her. Um, but they stood there the entire time, the rest of the protest, and, and did not disperse. Um. Okay, we are just getting started, and we'll pick up this discussion right after we check on the weather. The Alfa Romeo Quadrifolio charmed us all and crippled the competition. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. Which cities eat the healthiest? We'll have the answer in our HealthSmart report. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. We asked you, Suncoast, why do you like ABC7? I like ABC7 because it's local. It gives me all the local news. The local news, local weather. It's so local and so community driven. Kelly Wilgus does a great job. John Scalzi, that's my guy. Bob Harrigan is wonderful. Stephanie's my favorite. I like Scott Dennis. I like them all. We're all very grateful that you cover what you do and you're here to participate with the community. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate, or shop at Goodwill. I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything, or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here at the Wanna Be Inn on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Alfa Romeo got a lot right with the Julia, but the handling alone is sufficient reason to get one. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Our discussion of the Proud Boys and alt-right groups continues in a moment, but right now let's get a check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. A hot one today. 97 degrees at the Sarasota Braden Airport. Setting a record high today. And clear skies out on the water. A nice day out there. And not much of a breeze to cool, uh, cool things down, but temperatures still at the beaches warmed into the upper 80s there. And you see some clouds coming in just the last few frames. That is the east coast breeze making it all the way over now. And we are starting to see some showers popping up here and there as a result of that. You can see that rain 
uh, moving off to the west. Now it will continue to do so through the next couple of hours and eventually fade away. But uh, right now the showers are fairly significant there along I-75 near Jacaranda heading toward Venice. Some rainfall there. Englewood has had their showers periodically through the last couple of hours now, developing from near Punta Gorda and then heading off to the west. You can see that rainfall again now near Venice. Now we're getting some action as well into Manatee County, a little late and starting, but there's some showers there. These will intensify as they make their way off to the west northwest here through this evening. So we'll keep a pretty good chance for a few scattered showers and even an isolated thunderstorm in the mix up until about nine o'clock and then things will start to calm down at least over land uh, continuing out there in the water. 88 degrees right now. Dew points fairly high 72. It's warm. It's muggy. Not as hot as it was earlier today at 97 degrees and uh, the uh, old mark of 95. Uh, again, uh, we topped that by two degrees today. Winds will stay out of the east overnight and tomorrow. And uh, with the wind anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour throughout the afternoon, it's going to pin that sea breeze right to the coast. So we will see temperatures in the mid to upper 70s once again tomorrow and near, I should say, 90s. And we'll break some records too, it looks like. Highs will be in the low to mid 90s and low temperatures in the low to mid 70s. So those are summer like readings. The uh, showers and storms will develop once again along that sea breeze in the afternoon. Some big storms again firing up along this low pressure area in Iowa tonight seems to be the target with severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado watches now in effect stretching all the way to northwest Illinois. These are tornado warnings that you see right here as this line makes its way toward Davenport uh, in Iowa. Now we are anticipating uh, system in Utah to eventually swing a cold front our way. Uh, it won't be much of a front, but it'll be around on Monday and Tuesday. Before then, we'll get some energy from the Bahamas moving into our direction, so that will increase our rain chances on Friday and Saturday. Look for a little bit more widespread rainfall as we head into Friday and Saturday. For boaters, again, the things will be uh, rather calm throughout most of the day tomorrow. High temperatures will stay into the low 90s uh, through Friday, cooling down just slightly on the weekend due to the increased cloud cover and chances for showers and storms. Al will be back right after this. Stick around. Coming up at 5 a.m. on Good Morning Sun Coast, computer models suggest radar might become a little more active as we head into the weekend. We'll talk about that bright and early. Plus, how thousands in Manatee County will benefit from an energy grid upgrade. And we'll take a look at how police in Bradenton are honoring two fallen officers with a special display. That's tomorrow starting at 5 on Good Morning Sun Coast. ABC 7, we're here for you. This is an important medical announcement. Xeralto and Pradoxa have been linked to uncontrollable bleeding and even death. If you've been prescribed one of these drugs and have experienced these dangerous side effects, you may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that Pradoxa can cause more heart attacks than warfarin, and other countries have already issued safety warnings against this drug. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. The call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to Pradoxa victims, and thousands of Xarelto victims are filing their legal cases. Call the Drug Watch Hotline. If you or a loved one used Xeralto or Pradoxa and experienced uncontrollable bleeding, brain hemorrhage, or even death, you must call now. Call 800-793-6055. 800-793-6055. It's no small wonder anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No smile. I mean, really moves me. One. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder. High performance style. Let the art of Fiat move you. Today, the air is perfect. Inside. Expect more from your cooling and heating. Daikin. 
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing alt-right groups such as Proud Boys. The organization is gaining popularity right here on the Sun Coast. Our guests tonight are Mark Gaborfield of the Florida ACLU and Roger Diaz with Progressive Sarasota. Roger, let me uh, go back to you because fair to say you take part in protests often around the Sun Coast? Yes, I do. And in many cases, uh, the opposition, the Republican opposition is also protesting, correct? Yeah, um, we often have people that are uh, strong Trump supporters, and they're there, you know, verbalizing their support of Trump, and, you know, um, but I've never really ever seen this type of physical involvement before. Because I want to be clear about that. You, you, the Democratic or progressive groups often are at protests uh, with the opposite numbers in, in terms of conservative or Republican groups, but it, is it more or less respectful it most is of the respectful, time? yeah, most of the time. So this was different? Yeah, definitely different. Um, there was a level of intimidation. Uh, they, were, they were bullies. You know, they pushed their way in and were intent. I, it felt like they were intent on trying to make a confrontation of some sort. And, and it wasn't in defense of? No. Of anything the progressives were doing to, to threaten the Republicans or? No, no, the uh, Republicans were further down the block and they and, and the progressives were uh, on the corner and they moved into where we were standing and, and purposely, you know, came in to just kind of make contact. Okay, we want, we want to be clear about that. And, and Michael, is, you know, has this happened before here on the, on the Sun Coast or are you aware? I'm not aware of it happening before and just going back to that line of questioning, uh, I think the Republican groups that were protesting were just as surprised to mm -hmm. see this group uh, come in as anyone else. So let's be clear about that. Um, but, uh, you know, jostling in a crowd is one thing. But someone, you know, uh, being a bully, shoving their way, physical contact, that's the kind of conduct we say and crosses we, the line. And we have seen just where this could go because as Kate showed in her story the situation in uh, Berkeley a couple months ago what was violent um, you know you, you could get into who was wrong and who was right but um, or who instigated it uh, but you know that was a very dangerous situation here and I guess the concern over people who are watching this right now whether you're a Democrat or Republican progressive or conservative is that we don't want that here we don't want that here we don't want anything to lead to violence we certainly value the First Amendment. We cannot pick who is protected by the Constitution. Everyone is protected by the Constitution. But we don't condone violence. And, and we did meet with the police chief afterwards and express some concerns that there was not intervention when and if officers witnessed any acts of physical contact. We don't want situations to get out of hand. We also don't want to discourage protesters from coming to protest and expressing their First Amendment rights. And, and sometimes these events or these uh, movements, if you will, are designed to do just that. Well, what was the response from the, uh, response from the police department? Well, they were going to check with lawyers uh, at city attorney's office, and they would, uh, uh, you know, there was a favorable response that uh, officers would be educated about what is allowed, what is not allowed, in protests and counter-protests. Frankly, I've been to probably a dozen protests since the election here, and all of them, I wasn't at this one, but all of them have been uh, uh, very, uh, you know, no violence, no confrontations even. And the police department has done an excellent job. Right, Roger, but you, you can imagine that there are people who are watching this right now will say that if you look back at the 2016 campaign, there were situations, I believe, in uh, Detroit and places like Cincinnati where it was left-wing groups which were accused of, uh, uh, of starting the, the, you know, burning fires and, and, and physical confrontations. And so they may be saying, hey, you got, you got your, your troublemakers on your side too. Um, I have no knowledge of that. I I'm, wasn't in Cincinnati or wherever. So um, all I know is the people in Sarasota and the people in Sarasota are um, a good, kind, passionate people that care about their neighbors. Um, Answer Sarasota had a couple weeks before that um, protest. They had a um, protest in front of Vern Buchanan's office, uh, which was very peaceful. Several hundred people came out. Again, 
you know, wanting to, um, to um, provide the message that we are good neighbors, uh, uh, that we love our neighbors. You know, Michael, we often talk about that we live in an increasing polarized uh, society right now, and we're seeing that in our everyday lives and with the election and what has happened since. But um, this appears to be something else. The, this group predates the 2016 election, not by much, but uh, you know, we, we're hearing more and more about the alt-right and where it goes. Well, I think that message comes from the top. When, when you have a candidate uh, such as President Trump who uh, appeals to that kind of messaging, that type of, of drama, that's the kind of conduct you get from people. But he has made statements recently, uh, whether it's about anti-Semitism or the way we interact with each other, which he has tried to ratchet that down. Well, I, I can't remember. I think it was the uh, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell who basically was begging someone to take the President's Twitter account <laughs> away from him. Now, he has a First Amendment right to do what he does, but that sets the tone when it comes from that level, and people think that it's justified when they go out on the street and confront people. Let's take a quick break, and when we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, mental health care in our colleges and universities. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? You need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on a pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second spin mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. You only have one life. Are you gambling with it? One in three adults have high blood pressure. Not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time. Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPV. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sports Utility for $249 per month or 2017 MKZ for $299 per month. We are proud to introduce the newest addition to the Lincoln lineup, the all-new 2017 Lincoln Continental. We have a great selection and ready for immediate delivery. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. Can we expect more alt-right groups like the Proud Boys to continue mobilizing in Florida? Where do you draw the line between free speech and hate speech? Our guests join us now for final thoughts. And Roger, I'll start with you because you're the person who is out there every day uh, and you know, you've been protesting for years, causes that are close to you, mm -hmm. alongside uh, people who disagree with you. Um, you know, what do you hope happens here? And because this group is here, they have demonstrated that they are here now. Right. Um, well, you know, the, the new segment that was on the national news that was on, um, I was in, in the green room watching it, and the State Department uh, made a statement about the protests in front of the Turkish embassy, yes. and they stated that we support the rights of people everywhere to peaceful protest. And I think, you know, that's really what, you know, um, I hope we can have here in Sarasota, that the police and the politicians and, and, and our community support peaceful protest. 
Michael, where do you see this going? Because obviously, as I said, we live in polarized times with, you know, you could argue whether or not this administration and this president is responsible for it. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure that the Republicans and Democrats out there look at what happened in Sarasota a few weeks ago and what happened, you know, out in Berkeley uh, several months ago, and they don't want that here. I, I would say that's true. They don't want that here. We don't want any incidents that would occur like what occurred in Berkeley. But, you know, there's always going to be speech that is offensive to some. The beauty of the First Amendment is that it protects speech for all. But it does not protect violence. And that's where the ACLU draws the line. And I think uh, the First Amendment has survived intact for many years. You pointed out to me the, the situation years ago involving the, uh, the, the neo-Nazis in, in this country. And they won the right to protest in, in Illinois and other places. Uh, but it, it didn't quite work out that well for them. Right. I mean, uh, I, I witnessed a KKK parade where we uh, enforced their right to um, uh, protests in Worth Avenue and, and it didn't turn out well for them. In fact, they were jeered by onlookers and, and made uh, fools of themselves. And I think that the First Amendment allows them to make fools of themselves. Free speech, combating free speech. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about last night's topic, mental health care for college students. In a recent survey, 70% of college administrators named it as their top concern for their students. Florida's University Board of Governors asked lawmakers to expand funding for services in this year's budget. Their request was rejected. We asked you what you think about the mental health care services available in our colleges and universities. And Josh, For John Forehand writes, it seems like the current generation that is in college and high school really can't handle life and want you to feel sorry for them. Well, suck it up, snowflakes, because once you're out in the real world, you are in it for a world of hurt, and many people aren't going to put up with your whining. Nice. Danielle Diorio writes, I have struggled since probably about freshman year, not because I was ill-prepared, but because mental health is brushed under the rug in some families or not fully understood. Then, bam, it's facing you full force, and you're not sure how to cope. And Rosemary Alby writes, how would anyone of you feel if your child needed to talk to someone and no one was available, then went home and killed themselves? Some of you are the reason that this world is in the way it is, where is the empathy and compassion. What do you think about the Proud Boys and their growing presence here on the Sun Coast? Join the conversation by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, you can watch past roundtable discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Mark, Michael Barfield is vice president of the ACLU of Florida, and Roger Diaz is an activist with Progressive Sarasota. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus a thankless job. Florida is honoring its falling corrections officers by how many prisoners have died in state facilities each year. The details in our primetime headlines. Fresh out of the box, the Alfa Romeo won us over. We went in skeptical and left in awe of this gorgeous machine. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. I am a veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. 
Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment, and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800 685 6422. 800 685 6422. It does things that seem impossible. Feeling like it could change direction while airborne. Rediscover your passion for driving. At Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get the final check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. And get a look at this shot right here. Sun setting over Sarasota Bay with our tower cam. Looking off to the west, those clouds darkening a bit as some showers have developed along the sea breeze front, and it's only going to get better. Sunset coming just after 8 o'clock tonight, right around 8.10, and it should be spectacular. Well, here's what's going on as far as the radar picture goes. Pretty active. Some showers around and uh, not much lightning at this point, but there have been some uh, fairly heavy rains at times near Venice and near the Venetian along I-75. Northport now near Warm Mineral Springs, a little shower there. Port Charlotte seems to have been popping up there all evening long. And it uh, looks like that continues to move off toward Inglewood. Inglewood has had several showers uh, kind of training across that area over the past two hours now. So some beneficial rains now falling at the uh, Venice, uh, right down in town, Venice there, uh, near Nokomis as well, getting some rainfall. As I mentioned, along I-75, stretching out toward the Venetian. And then Lakewood Ranch, uh, where they had rain yesterday, near Fruitville and I-75, southward from University. Again, all that uh, heading off to the west at around 5 to 10 miles an hour, and we can expect this to uh, continue to work its way in that general direction toward Bayshore Gardens, possibly in the next half hour to 45 minutes. Currently at the airport, it's 88. We have a few clouds now as a result of those showers that have moved in. West to northwest winds at 12, and the pressure is uh, slowly rising right now. The high today, 97 degrees. That uh, topped the old mark of 95, set back in 1943. And as far as the forecast goes uh, for tomorrow, Mostly sunny skies and a temperature 92 tomorrow, mid to upper 90s expected inland. Tonight, a few evening showers are possible, otherwise partly cloudy and warm. We'll see a 71 degree uh, temperature for our overnight lows tonight. And as far as the tides go, upcoming tides, low tide will be at 127. A high will be at 820. And as I mentioned, sunset coming just after 8 o'clock, 810 tonight at 813. And sunrise will be at 640. Well, here's the extended forecast as we see it. A slight chance for late day storms tomorrow again, Thursday. And then a much better chance for a little bit more widespread coverage with some lightning on Friday. And the same story on Saturday. Inland storms mainly on Sunday as a front, a front approaches. And we get more of a westerly wind that pushes everything east of I-75. Alan will be back with primetime headlines right after this. Stick around. If you want 24-7 access to ABC 7's breaking news stories, weather forecasts, traffic alerts, health reports, Suncoast View, and more ABC 7 programming, now there's good news. Introducing the free ABC 7 channel on Amazon Fire TV. Your 24-7 access to ABC 7. Just search ABC 7 on the streaming device and download the free ABC 7 channel app. Or if you don't have an Amazon Fire TV, you can get one at Amazon.com. Where the spring clearance is on. Pay no interest until April 2018 with same day pickup or next day delivery. The stool reclining sofa with drop down table and two cup holders, $4.99 in beige or brown. The special purchase white cottage house bedroom, now $7.99. Matching nightstand free. These Danish chairs with matching ottoman, your choice of colors, only $2.99 each. Now at the Furniture Warehouse in Sarasota, Bradenton, Venice, Port Charlotte, and Ellington. And save big. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. Come on in, welcome to our pad. Trust me, folks, you'll eat for bed. I'm driving so relax. I'm why leave your bunk, it's all behind you, ready to blow your mind. In Batesville, don't be shy. Come and make the scene. Catch the
a crazy party inside. The hipsters here are gone. And dig, man, they're on to something big. Yeah, they're gonna flip your wig in Beatsville. Catch the gig in Beatsville. Drive into Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota and discover big savings during the Drive and Discover event. Come shop the Suncoast's largest selection of Ram trucks. Get maximum cargo space and more comfort with a new Ram quad cab for as low as $24,999. Or get more legroom and maximum comfort with a new Ram crew cab and save up to $10,000. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Now for your primetime headlines and take a look at these numbers. A tough day on Wall Street might be an understatement with the Dow dropping 372 points and the Nasdaq falling more than 150 points. The dollar is now at its lowest level since the election. What's behind it? You could take a guess. A defiant President Trump condemning the media today. It comes as some Democrats are calling for his impeachment for what they say is obstruction of justice. It is the, just the latest fallout from a memo by former FBI Director James Comey and ABC's Maggie Rooley has the latest. A commencement address to the United States Coast Guard. Fight, fight, fight. Turning into a defense of his presidency. Look at the way I've been treated lately, especially by the media. No politician in history has been treated worse or more unfairly. President Trump alluding to the weeks of chaos at the White House. It seems like we are learning disturbing new allegations about President Trump, not just every day, but ladies and gentlemen, every hour. Most recently, that bombshell allegation that the president tried to interfere with a federal investigation, allegedly asking then-FBI Director James Comey to back off the investigation into his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. ABC News has confirmed that Comey wrote a memo detailing a meeting he had with Trump after Flynn was fired, in which the president allegedly said of Flynn, he is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. But the White House is pushing back, saying the president has never asked Mr. Comey or anyone else to end any investigation, adding this is not a truthful or accurate portrayal of the conversation. It is obvious there, there are some people out there who want to harm the president. Other Republicans on the Hill are cautiously responding to the allegations. We should see those notes. Let's see Director Comey's notes. Let's have him testify before Congress. And based on the facts laid out by him directly and those notes, then people can make a determination. Many Democrats are not so reserved. The president must be impeached. At least two Senate committees have formally requested both classified and unclassified material from the FBI, including Comey's memo. They gave them a deadline of May 24th. Maggie Rooley, ABC News, Washington. Congressman Vern Buchanan is joining fellow members of Congress weighing in on the Comey memo. In a statement released today, Buchanan writes, Mr. Comey should be asked to testify in public so that Congress and the American people can get all the facts and learn the truth. We need to see Mr. Comey's memo regarding his discussion with the president. Transparency is the best disinfectant. The Trump administration is renewing the Iran nuclear deal. You know, the one the president called the worst deal ever. The deal eases sanctions against Iran and was brokered under President Obama. In return, Iran pledged to restrict its nuclear activities and allow international inspections of its facilities. However, the Treasury Department is bringing new sanctions against Chinese businesses links, with links to Iran's missile program. Now to the fallout of President Trump giving highly sensitive information from U.S. ally Israel to top Russian officials. Russian President Vladimir Putin denies receiving any secrets from Trump. U.S. allies Great Britain and Australia are voicing confidence in their relationship with the U.S., but not in Trump specifically. Israel's defense minister tweeting, quote, the security relationship with our greatest ally is deep, significant, and unprecedented. However, the former U.S. ambassador to Israel says an unwritten rule has been broken. There are clear understandings that the receiving country uh, cannot share that intelligence with any other party without the express permission of the country that collected it. 
President Trump will meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu next week during his first trip abroad since taking office. Trump is also reigning, uh, reneging on his campaign promise to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The soldier convicted of one of the biggest leaks of classified information in U.S. history is walking free today. Chelsea Manning posting on Instagram the caption, First Steps of Freedom. The transgender former Army intelligence officer, once known as Bradley Manning, was convicted of espionage in 2013. It came after Manning stole and leaked 700,000 classified documents to WikiLeaks, including this video of a U.S. helicopter killing two Reuters journalists in Iraq. Former President Obama commuted Manning's 35-year sentence, saying justice has been served. Now to the deadly tornadoes ripping through the Midwest. Two people are dead and at least 100 homes are destroyed after more than 25 twisters touched down overnight from Texas to Wisconsin. Emergency crews are still sifting through the wreckage looking for survivors. A storm hit system hit when many people were home. There should be six mobile home trailers. There's nothing. There's just debris. There's not a refrigerator. There's not a stove. There's not anything and it's just total destruction. The number of injured could go as uh, up as the search continues. A follow-up on the arson fire at a Tampa mosque in February. Tonight, sheriff's deputies are releasing surveillance footage of the suspect. It shows the suspect setting the fire to the Islamic Society of New Tampa as well as a nearby sidewalk. Once the mosque fire was lit, the suspect fled the scene. The, damage, uh, the fire damaged the mosque's front door and part of its facade. Anyone with information on the suspect is asked to contact the Hillsborough County's Sheriff's Office. Today, two members of the department died last year. Sergeant Jorge Ramos died during a training event, and analyst Karen Smith died of a heart attack while on the job. Florida Secretary of Correction says being a correctional officer is often a thankless job, and the public should remember the work done by all employees in the department. It's a tough job, and sometimes we don't listen, we don't hear from individuals in the public that tell us how grateful they are that we're doing this job. But by remembering those that have gone before us every year like this, we take it to heart. In total, 49 corrections officers have died on the jobs over the last years. Last year, 356 inmates died in Florida prisons, the highest number in state history. While health problems caused many of those deaths, the major majority do not list an official cause of death. And that's the, all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.